In today's training, we're going to be talking about how to do business with the Department of Homeland Security, DHS. So let's go ahead and get started by getting to the slides. One of the things I like to start off these particular trainings on, these how to do business trainings, is to back up for one second and talk about us. For most of the training, I'm going to talk about DHS, but I want to talk about our sales activities, right? And in particular, what I'm going to teach to you today is a proactive, not a reactive approach to selling. And if you're looking at my screen, you see this first bullet. I say that blind responding to RFPs is not selling, it's reactive. And what I mean by this is going into SAM.gov, seeing an RFP that dropped and responding to it. That's not selling, that's quoting, that's bidding, right? But there's no selling involved, you're just responding. I'm okay with people doing that occasionally. I, I don't have a particular problem with it. I just think you're not gonna have as much success if that's your whole strategy. Do that sometimes, but if you're gonna actually sell, then you need to be proactive about selling. You need to do what we call shifting left in the process. And so business development and capture are selling in government contracting. That's where you really wanna focus on putting your energy. Um, and so when you think about business development in particular, right, that's the part I really wanna dive into today as it relates to DHS, it's understanding your target agency, understanding DHS better than almost anybody in there. Think about the people who work at DHS. They all have these particular jobs and they're focused on that job. They don't really know the, the overall details of DHS. They don't really know uh, TSA knowing FEMA's mission and, and Secret Service mission or Coast Guard, et cetera. Everybody's in a little particular job, but you, if you wanna serve DHS, you have this ability to understand that agency, that department better than almost anybody out there. By the way, let me pause for a second. If you're already in DHS, do me a favor, put that in the chat. Let me know that you're in there because as we start going, you're not gonna really have any time to get back to chat. Um, and then the other thing is if you're not in there, but you wanna get into DHS, let me know that as well, wanna get into DHS. So understanding your agency will allow you to then begin to identify people to build relationships with. And relationships are the key to success in government contracting. You wanna be able to have relationships so you can talk to DHS personnel about their agency, about their goals, their challenges, et cetera. And so you need to build these relationships. And I'll talk a little bit about that I've done a ton of training on it. And then the last thing in business development, as part of this proactive approach to success in DHS or selling into DHS, is identifying opportunities, identifying them early and then beginning to pursue them. And so that's what we're gonna talk about today. A lot of different ways to be proactive in your approach to DHS, in your approach to selling to DHS. Um, usually I do slides where every slide has some bullets, but I'm not doing that today. I've got one slide that I'll cover down on. It's got 10 components of DHS that I wanna, well, not components, cause that's their term, but 10 parts of DHS I wanna talk to you about as it relates to selling into DHS. If you don't know who I am, my name is Neil McDonald. I wanna welcome you to my federal sales training where I provide tips for success in the federal market. I spent 20 years as a small business owner in the federal market. And since 2018, when I started the GovCon Chamber of Commerce, I've been teaching people like you that government contracting is not a secret, it's a process. When you follow a process A to Z, you're gonna have repeatable, predictable results. And that's what I want for you. Um, if you're looking at my screen, you can take a screenshot of the seven step process that I lay out here. It's fundamentally what I'm gonna be talking about as it relates to DHS, but this is my seven step process for federal revenue success. How you go from pretty much not having any traction in an agency to being on this wheel of success that leads to sale after sale after sale. That is doable when you stay focused and you drive forward on trying to understand your customer. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive uh, deep into the training. By the way, I didn't say this uh, already, but if you're open to connections and you're trying to get into DHS, you might consider putting that into the chat so people can, you can uh, all connect with each other. I got a lot of training I'm doing, but the chat's a great place for you to meet others who are trying to get into DHS. So I'm gonna go through these 10 bullets. I'm gonna go really fast. You can come back and um, look at this replay, watch the replay of this. Also, if you want a copy of these links that I'm gonna be going to, just put into the chat now before we get too much farther, links, please. Put that into the chat. I like please on there. <laughs> links, please, into the chat, and I'll know to uh, let you know about these uh, links for DHS. So let's get started. First thing I like to do when I look at any organization, but in DHS in particular, is I like coming in and seeing how their uh, department is organized, right? And each one of these boxes has its own org chart and I can keep going down further and further and further. But my favorite thing about looking at something in here is 
I begin to sit there and put X's and, you know, like red marks on the ones that I won't pursue and, you know, circling green pen, the ones I will. And the idea is I want to start looking at these, these uh, components or parts of DHS and say, which ones can I help with the most? Which ones am I most likely to go into? So as you continue to do research, you're going to learn more and more about which agencies or which uh, offices within DHS you can go after. One thing, if you don't know this, DHS calls their subordinate agencies like uh, Secret Service at the bottom here, CISA, and TSA, Coast Guard. They call those components. I call them agencies because they are agencies. Um, but in DHS, you've got this mix of component slash agencies and offices. And so that's, you'll hear me use them back and forth. Management directorate over here on the left is a big one to be, you know, for me to be paying attention to. So you want to take an org chart like this and begin to do that same activity. Mark off the ones that don't make any sense. Like right here, um, countering weapons of mass destruction office. You know what? I'm, I'm going to skip out of that. I don't really know anything about that. Um, I might stick, stay completely away from Office of General Counsel going, you know what, I, I don't really have a legal expertise. Leave that to the people who are in the, you know, the legal tech or legal side of the house. But I will go over here to like CIO and say, let me go to there. I will definitely pursue each one of the major agencies or components. And so, again, do that yourself. So you understand the organizational structure of an agency. You're beginning to get an idea saying, OK, this is how it looks. And by the way, I mean going further and further. I do this in the Air Force. And there's a major command within the Air Force, and it has over 100 different program offices or subordinate commands within it. I go that far down, and that's where you should be going down. It's not a lot of effort if you're trying to get millions of dollars out of DHS in contract dollars, right? Eventually, that's where you're trying to go if you're not there already. So number two, we want to understand um, the long-term goals and objectives. Number two here, the strategic plan documents or planning documents, that's about looking to the future. Where are you trying to take DHS, and how might I... might how might I might be able to help you? Whatever. How might I help you? Right. And so here's um, an example of their strategic plan. One of the cool things about DHS is they have a ton of plans. Every component, when you go down to it, you'll see a plan down there. But the idea of the DHS strategic plan is it gives you so much information. You can see over here on the left hand side, their major goals, right? Whatever opportunity you're pursuing, whatever you're doing, take the time to begin to figure out, well, how does it align to certain goals? So right here, secure cyberspace and critical infrastructure. I might say to myself, well, you know what? I'm a cyber company and that's 100% uh, in our space. But if I look at um, secure US borders and approaches, you know what? I'm not even gonna look there. Even if I could touch on it as a cyber company, I'm gonna lean heavily into goal three. What I don't need to tell DHS is that I can cover down on all five goals, right? There's thousands of us. They don't need all of our small businesses covering down on all five goals. What you want to do is to be able to say you could cover down on goal three. And then as you look at goal three, and I'm not really trying to show you the words here, but as you start looking at goal three, you can start seeing objectives. So I have customers that do zero trust architecture and they do enterprise network engineering and cybersecurity related to that. That might align to securing the federal civilian networks, right? How everything is working together. When you read a strategic plan, you start seeing a lot of that information. Let me show you one more thing here with the table of contents on strategic plan. It takes a second, there we go. Um, so you can see how it's broken down, the goals, the objective. Just like I said, circle the org chart for the organizations or program offices you support. Come in here, you should have this printed and go, I wanna get into DHS, these are the objectives I can support, right? And so um, one other thing though, as you're looking at the strategic plan, Make sure you're coming down and looking at things like their um, uh, agency priority goals, right? And they've got their, here it's their 2019 performance measures, but you can see future ones and I'll show you that in a minute. But take a look at what they're trying to do. Remember, I said uh, I'm a cybersecurity firm for today's training. I want to look at strengthening the federal cybersecurity. That's a priority goal. That means this is one of the most important things that DHS is trying to get done. I want to understand more about what they're trying to accomplish, et cetera. And I can do that by digging in to the main strategic plan. Again, every agency or uh, subordinate component within DHS has their own plan. Here's just one I wanted to show you as it goes to the side. I've shared a lot of these on my LinkedIn profile, but here is the IT strategic plan. So one is for DHS's overall strategic plan for what they're trying to do with Homeland Security, right? Now it's coming down and, and there's several different plans that they have that are more vertical related information technology. There's another one that I shared about environmental sustainment, 
Um, I, I just shared one on the Marine Corps that was climate, how they protect their bases from climate issues like hurricanes and other things like that. Well, you can start digging down and finding similar documents like that, but they're all strategic plans, right? They're all talking about how are we going to get done? What we see needs to get done. That's the way forward. Um, and that's generally four-year plans, right? They, they tend to go in administrations. And so four-year plan. Number three is annual performance plan. Sometimes I find this in a performance plan, sometimes annual report, but basically we're talking about just a one-year snapshot now. So if I click on this one really quick, and let me just load the other one as well. So I just track on my time. Um, so here, this is an agency financial report, 330 pages of pure gold, right? It's not enough to grow your company by looking into Sam, seeing an opportunity and responding. You're not gonna grow to a big company. Can you win a contract or two? Sure, I love doing that. If I can find someone to just do it, that's great. But that's not becoming a partner with the agency of choice, right? If you really wanna support DHS, if you really care about Homeland Security's mission, you will begin to understand their mission in depth and they make it easy for us. They create these plans for internal use, right? So everybody inside has a good common understanding of what we're trying to do as an organization or agency. Um, and but they allow us to see it on the outside as well. And so in here, if you come down, I'm going to go pretty fast down to a couple of slides here. But you just see this evolution of some of the things they've been doing. Um, here is just more stuff on reaching them. Where am I trying to get? Right here is where I was trying to get. So about this report, right? In here, they're talking about uh, detailed financial information related to what they're doing, right? They're talking about highlighting priorities, strengths, and challenges. And this is really important, right? Again, I don't have a lot of time to go into any one of these documents, but when you look at a document like this, you can see them saying, I'm complaining about this. Sales is about first understanding and hearing a customer's problems, then making that problem really be big in the customer's eyes, and then start talking to them about solutions. This is the start of it. They're telling you completely transparently, hey, this is what we're running into. Um, here's another document. DHS breaks their strategic plans up into multiple documents. But this one, I love how they just titled this other information. But look how golden this other information is right here. Um, you know, when you come in, you start seeing some of the financial information um, and whoop, right here. Um, but right here, other key regulatory requirements and challenges are running into. OIG is their Office of Inspector General who does an independent look at the agency or the department says, hey, these are the management and performance challenges we have with uh, accomplishing our mission. You want to come in here, take the time to look at it. I, I like to say again, if you're trying to get a million dollars or 10 or $100 million out of DHS, could you not invest 10 or 20 or 40 hours to understand the documents? We all certainly seem to be spending that much time on Link or on uh, Netflix. We can do it in DHS. Okay, I'm just cruising along. We're at number. Uh, so those are the forecasts, right? Um, and I mean, excuse me, those are understanding what do they do, the mission, it goes in much more depth, et cetera, around what they're trying to accomplish. Now going into four, five, six, and seven, I wanna talk about money. So number four is I always like looking back and going, okay, where have they spent money? And let's go ahead and take a look at this one. And let me close some of these little guys. So for me, my favorite place to go for uh, looking at where government has spent money is to go to USA Spending. It pulls its data from FPDS, so it's the same data, FPDS is the actual source, but this is what we call a presentation friendly application that they got. So first thing is, let me just make sure you see, I created a filter in USA spending and all I'm looking at is last fiscal year, 23. Um, I am looking at contract types or award types that are just contracts. I don't wanna see grants or anything else. I'm looking at awarding agency as DHS. I could have looked at it from a funding agency, but sometimes they fund stuff that's done by other people. So I'm looking for uh, most likely what they're doing themselves. And then the last thing is, I just want to see what did they award to small businesses out there? So let me zoom that back in. Um, one of the first things I notice when I'm coming in, and you can come in and look at this in depth by following the link I'll give you, but I can see they, they've done 21,000, almost 22,000 contract action activities, et cetera, with small businesses in FY 2023. To put it in perspective, yesterday I did HUD and it was like 700. So when I look at the departments I'm trying to go into, I, I personally wouldn't go into HUD. I'd look to DHS and go, they have a lot more activity and a lot more spending. There's a lot more chance I can participate. Not to knock HUD. I'm just saying I like big numbers because it means more of us have a chance to participate. Um, 
another thing I want you to understand on money is I like looking in and going, okay, these guys have spent $10 billion. Here's another thing, by the way, uh, $10 billion in contract dollars went to um, small businesses in DHS last year. Compare that to HUD, $1 billion was their entire contract spent. So it, it included larges there. But one of the things you want to uh, do, and I want to get off of HUD's case. I apologize for doing that. Um, but one of the things I like looking here is what's the spun, spend pattern. And this is pretty predictable here. Uh, you can see in the first quarter, which we're in right now, they do the least amount of spending. And then as they get closer to the end of the year, they'll do more and more. So that's good to see. And then you also track on the months. DHS has got a fairly steady spend, you know, right around a billion dollars, plus or minus 200 million. Um, and then you just see in the last two months, they do, uh, you know, 30, 40% of their spending in that last quarter. Uh, uh, so I don't care about MAP. MAP's a great place, by the way, if you ever want to look at it, it shows you uh, where they're spending money, like where they're doing the work and where the recipients are. And it's a hugely interesting thing to look at. But I want to get here to show you sub agencies. Inside of here, when I'm looking at DHS and I'm looking at that big spend that they do, like $8 billion. It's also the number one for 8A I did recently, but Coast Guard and then it's headquarters. So OPO or whatever that acronym is, right? OPO. That one is um, headquarters. And so when you start looking at this, you get an understanding of where that spread is. But it's really interesting for me when I'm looking at DHS, especially when I'm trying to decide where do I invest my energy? I had somebody contact me this morning asking me to train their junior business developers to get in and start doing stuff. Well, the first thing I would say is keep those people working on the top. Just let them be dedicated to CBP, dedicated to Coast Guard and get in there. Um, OK, one more thing I wanted to just show you right here. I'm showing you spending by award. I mean, by agency, you can also look at the industry codes. Uh, I like just going to the NAICS codes and you can see what are they spending money on from a, a very quick level. But the interesting thing is um, the top two are IT. For the other training I've done this week, the top four or six were IT or, or professional services. But you notice right away it jumps to security, uh, guard, patrol services. This makes a lot of sense because of DHS's mission. But this is a good way to see and begin to see where the spending is. You can use USA Spending to dive even deeper on that. All right, so that's where they've spent. Now I want to look at where they think they're going to spend money. So the first place is in their budget. And I just want you to come in. This is not their full budget. This is actually just the summary. Um, and so in here, you can go in and begin to learn about how they're spending. I just like coming down here. Um, really quickly, I can come into DHS and see a breakdown for each one of their component and major component agencies and major offices. You want to do that same thing. And then each one of these agencies has its own uh, budget documentation that you can go look at and dig further in. Like I said, this is 119 pages, but I could dig much, much further. If I was looking for um, cybersecurity, for example, and not that, not those guys, but uh, if I just look at cyber, let me jump down. I can start seeing where some of their funding priorities are and so, uh, how they're funding not just DHS, but how they might be funding other agencies. You can do the same thing. It's a great way to go through budget documents because there are a lot of pages. If you go through it and do a control F or however you do it on a Mac and search the document, you'll be able to see these major programs coming up. But keep in mind, the document I'm showing you here and that I'll send you, it's just a brief. There's entire document sets and you should take the time to get to uh, to understand them, right? Because 80% of what's in them, you won't look at. They're tables and other stuff, but there are pure gems within those documents that once you develop the skill on reviewing budget documents, you're off to the races. All right. And again, I'm moving super fast because we're, you know, we've got a short amount of time. Uh, DHS does a great job with their forecast tool. Here it is. Um, you can come in and look at it. For the most part, what I like to do is just come back. And over here, I just clicked twice on forecast publish date. And I can see since the last time I looked at the forecast, has anything been added you know, and so, or changed or whatever? So this is their published forecast. Actually, I need DHS to tell me, is this modified and created or just created new? Um, but this ability to come in here and look at it, you've got all these great filters. I'm not going to show you training on how to use this. But one thing I like to do is right here, you have the ability to export it out. So I can see where they're spending money. 
What you don't want to do is export this out and put it into your pipeline. I export it out and just keep it as a spreadsheet because it's easier to use than, than this tool for me. I quickly go through and I find the slam dunk opportunities I want to pursue and I get rid of the rest. Do not grab a lot of data like this and put it into your system. It'll just make you do a bad job in sales. Um, okay, so contingency plan, I'll just go really quick. But the idea of this is if the budget doesn't get passed or if there's continuing resolutions, et cetera, what uh, services do they buy or what parts of DHS basically get shut down during a government shutdown and which parts continue going, right? Essential services. You want to come in here, understand what you do, and then understand what DHS thinks about it. That way you don't get shocked. You don't go, oh my gosh, the budget didn't get passed. I, I was so surprised that DHS did this. Don't be surprised. They're telling you right here exactly what will happen if the budget doesn't get passed. Um, number eight, they, DHS does not have a supplier portal, so just make sure uh, DSBS is uh, very good. So the dynamic small business search is your small business profile. DHS does a great job letting us know who to call for each one of their agencies. And so here on this link, you can come in and you can uh, check out the different people who are in here. So here's TSA as an example. There's uh, Robert, Margaret. You've got a phone number. You've got an email. DHS encourages you to reach out to two people to, or two groups of people, these people, but also in that forecast, if I still have it, in the forecast, they're generally, and let me just click on one really quick. There are generally points of contact, like right here. These typically are in the program office. And so DHS does a good job trying to give you contact information for people to reach out to and call. But these are great people to start navigating your way forward. We do this all the time with our customers. The first place we get them to talk to is the small business office. So they're building a relationship with them. That way, as they continue to navigate within DHS, they have the ability to go back to their focus or receptivity, Margaret or Robert, as an example, and, and ask questions and get more guidance, et cetera. But these people should be in DHS. They should be on your radar and you should be building a strategic relationship with them. The last thing I wanted to show you is just on DHS has like 230,000 employees. Um, many of them are on LinkedIn. So if you come in here to uh, LinkedIn company page for DHS, the part that I like though is if you just click right there on employees like I did, you see 34,000 of those are over here on LinkedIn. You can come through and start finding a lot of these people, right? Here's a division chief. Um, this is a division chief for the, that whatever that thing was called. I, I forgot what it was called. Um, where's Fleck? Somebody find it for me. Oh, I lost it. But it's it's a uh, like law enforcement. You can't find things. There it is. Federal law enforcement training centers, right? And so right here is a division chief for Fleck over there. I don't know what it is, but I might take Michael's name. Now that I came into LinkedIn, I know who he is. I've discovered him. Let me go learn about him and decide, you know, is, is it making sense for me to reach out and contact him? But this is awesome, right? When you when I hear people say, I can't get into DHS or I can't find people, this is sales. Sales is about doing your research, building a list of one or 200 people out of DHS's 34,000 that might be good for relationships, right? Don't research these people a lot, a little teeny bit, just to make sure you want to call them and then reach out and schedule a meeting. When you do that from information like this, um, you really be able to get further within DHS and start building some success. So if you want a copy of these links, do me a favor, just put in the chat links, please. Here's what I want you to remember from today's training. Buyers don't care what you know until they know that you care. Buyers don't care what you know until they know that you care, that you care about their goals, their challenges, their mission, what they exist for, right? And when you do your research, you're starting to care. You're demonstrating to them that you care. And that's really important part to helping them understand that you care. And it's also a vital step to the third bullet here is building strategic relationships. You will then be able to start building these strategic relationships. Only when you have strategic relationships, which all of us can build, when you have those strategic relationships, will you have a lot of success and be able to hit the goals that you want? You don't want to focus on your goals. You want to focus on meeting people and building those relationships. Those will help you hit the goals. Hey, if you're interested in working with us, we'd love to have you work with us to accelerate your growth into DHS or within the federal government. Just check out govconchamber.com. You can learn more about how you can work with us. Um, next year, I'm only going to work with 20 customers. And so I'm, you know, we're lining that up here in December. If you're interested, Join us. Otherwise, this training I create all the time. Um, what I work, what I do with my customers, all the process, et cetera, I teach all of that for free. I just keep coming back every single day because I know 
Uh, many, many of you are just getting started and you're just trying to figure out how to get going. Or some of you are in jobs and you can't work with me directly. That's cool. Here's the training. Make sure you go check out the training. I've done over 400 trainings in the last two years specifically to help you succeed in the government contracting space. The best way to uh, remember on how you can succeed is that government contracting, it's not a secret. It's just a process. When we follow a process, we're going to have repeatable, predictable results. That's what I want for you. I'll see you in the next training.